And well, hello there, folks. It's me, RGB from RGB TV, and it's time to do another Burger Sasu against Stork. Because we were in the middle of a best of set, we've done game number one, so that means it's, game, it's time for game number two. Between these two very strong players, one is a fastest map Gosu and a fastest map Legend, and the other, Stork, is a legend in StarCraft overall. Like, he has left his mark on StarCraft history by being one of the best performing players during the Kespa era, which is like from 2003 to 2012. In 2012, Kespa ended after a lot of cheating scandals kind of left a bad mark on the league and people kind of gave up on it. Plus, people moved on to StarCraft 2 at the time. And a lot of those players eventually did come back to Brood War, Stork being one of them, he tried StarCraft 2, and then came back to StarCraft 1. And he has been moderately successful ever since his return to StarCraft Brood War, but he hasn't really ever gotten back to being one of the top 5 best players. Like back in the day, Stork was winning tournaments left and right. He won a lot of tournaments, he was considered to be the best player for a while, until, of course, Jay Dong, Flash, and Beast, who came around in fantasy as well. But his achievements are pretty damn good. He won a lot of tournaments. And he got into a lot of top four placings in a lot of tournaments as well. Overall, he's a great guy. Burgers House here on the Olive Green. It is not Olive Green, it's Pale Green Zerg. And then we've got Stork here on the Protoss on the other side of the map. He is behind by one. So the score is currently one win for Burger Sasu, no wins for Stork. Protoss against Zerk, cross map, middle spawn against middle spawn, and both players kind of know where the other is because, well, the Overlord there in the middle, of course, he gives away that Burger Sasu was here on the 9 o'clock, and it kind of gives away that Stork is there on the 3 o'clock. We don't often see games where it's 3 against 9 o'clock, it doesn't happen a lot. The chances are kind of small that it happens, but even though. The chances are about equal for any other configuration. We don't really see this that much, and I really like 3 o'clock against 9 o'clock. I really like these two spawn locations. So Burgers House is starting off quite safe with a double sunken in the front. Six Zerklings are on the way. It's a triple hatchery, two finished up, one still morphing. And yeah, just slowly progressing into the next phase of this game. Let's see what the sound settings are. A little bit too high, gonna get it a little bit lower. Okay, Stork here starts off with Nexus into Double Gateway, into a second Nexus and a Gas and a Forge. Not, in my opinion, the most efficient build order, but... We've seen Stork play very well so far. We've also seen him not quite sure what to do in the previous game. He started off really well, but then he kind of, at the 10 minute mark, wasn't quite sure how to break Burger Sasu's defense, and Burger Sasu has a particularly good Zerk defense. He's been training on his Zerk defense for years now, and he's been doing that by playing against the very best Protoss players in the world on fastest map. So he's been weathering the storm over and over again. He is one of the best defensive Zerks in StarCraft fastest map history. Stork there pumping out the Zealots. The Cybercore finished up. The one attack on the way. I think it's gonna be a Citadel of Doom next. Might be a Robo. Not entirely sure what he's gonna do. In the previous game, it was a Citadel. This time around, it's also a Citadel. And got a Hatchery there in the front coming up for Burger Sass. It's gonna be double Hatchery in the choke. And Sunken's in between and around. Over in the front, checking if there's gonna be a proxy middle Robo base. It's not gonna be built. Not something Stork really is into. It's 25 probes now for him, 20 drones there for Burger Sasu, who's getting a couple more hatcheries. He's scouting Stork's base there with that Zerkling, he sees that there's no Robos being warped in yet. I think he saw a lot of one attack there upgrading, saw four gateways, and not sure if he saw the Citadel of the Dune. He might have seen it because he went to the top side and the bottom side, so he might have seen the Citadel of the Dune warping in. And he's going to check it again, so he's for sure going to see it now, if he hadn't already seen it before. And there's gateway number 5 at the bottom, which he hasn't seen yet. He's got an there on the choke, he can see everything leave that base. 
and the Procleer going to the middle, it's time for that proxy Roa base there on the middle. Some cannons should be built there as well to contain Burger Sasu. And Burger Sasu going for a lot of hatcheries. He saw that there's no Robo. And if there's no Robo, you can delay your Hylodisk Den by a lot. Usually you start your Hylodisk Den when the Robo starts, as long as you can see the Robo starting. Otherwise, if you don't see the Robo start, because you can't get into the Protoss base, you kind of just get the Robo or the Hylodisk Den at about 4 minutes into the game. Then you get Hylodisk at about 5 minutes and Hydra's speed before range because you want those Hydra's to move around in your base rather quickly. The Stork is setting up for a frontal bust. He's going to try to break through this choke. And I'm not sure if Burger Sasu is adequately prepared for that. I do assume that this should do the trick. This should do the trick. Might add on a couple more Sunkens just in case. Here around the corner, difficult to attack with Zealots. Well, impossible to attack with Zealous around the corner, so Zealous can only attack these two Sunkens. The Dragoons have a chance of shooting on those Sunkens around the corners. So double Rover there on the way on the middle. Got level 1 attack almost finished up. Speed all speed is finished up, in fact. And Triple Robo, actually. Triple Robo on the middle. Speed finished up. Walking across the map. Got Hylas then finished up there for Burger Sasu. 31 drones at the moment and 40 for Probe for Stork there. And now Burgess has, of course, going to get them Hylodisks because he needs them to defend against whatever Bur a Stork is going to throw his way. Also, do note, no lair yet. No lair for Burger Sasu yet. Double attack happening there from Stork. Having a troubling time, difficult time breaking through. Sunken's the Sim City here is really good for Burger Sasu. Also, using those Zergs on the whole position to make sure that Zealous cannot walk through making it all the more difficult for Stork to get through, and also some Hylodus there assisting in making sure this is never going to get broken. So Stork there lost a bunch of Zealots trying to break through. They really could not attack a whole lot, either the Hatcheries, in which case they take damage from the Sunkens, or this one Sunken there in the front, in which case they take damage from the Sunkens. So very good setup there from Burger Sasu. Reavers though will be much stronger against this. Reavers will be much stronger against this, although Reavers do have some trouble shooting around this corner here. So that is still an issue Stork will have to overcome. He's getting shuttles first. I do see a Templar's Archive. I don't see any high Templars though, so no Storms. He's just going to shuttle units in and hopefully it kills some stuff with Zealots inside of Burgess House's base. He's now on 56 drones. He's been droning up really hard. He's even got more drones than Stork has at the moment. The fact Stork went for a big frontal mass attack meant that Burgess has could drone up a whole lot more than if Stork had gone for a drop. Against drops, you need a whole lot more Hydralisks than just one group of 12. So, yeah, because of that, he didn't need a lot of Hydralisks. He was okay with a small group of Hydralisks. He's got two groups of them, not even 24, it's about 20 of them. Shuttles coming in, starts to unload those Zealots. Shuttles are getting sniped out of the air. Shuttles are mostly unloading though, so now Zealots are on a chase with a level 1 attack and speed upgrade as well. Chasing those Hylodisks all the way back to the, the mineral line. Very good position here with those hatcheries. Difficult to get around or on top. A little bit of micro. Something in the back, providing assistance. Got level 1 attack and carapace on the way there for the Hydras. But the Zealots do kill a bunch of them Zealots. Kind of... The level 1 attack... Kind of strong with speed on Zealots. They do a lot of damage. So yeah, he slowed Burger Sasu down a little bit. But the one thing that would really have made that drop a great success was if he had picked up a Reaver and flown it into Burger Sasu's base while he was fighting against those Zealots. <clears throat> Another fall attack happening there. Killed the Hatcher. Now this is more open than before. It's wide open, but still a lot of Sunkens. That's a lot of Sunkens to break through, and he's not going to break through them. Not at this base, not using this configuration or setup. So yeah, loses a lot of supply there. Burger Sasu defeats that army quite easily, quite handily. This setup is just too strong against frontal attacks. The Reavers did some work, but couldn't do a whole lot more. He's getting Storm Rocket at the moment, getting level 1 armor, level 2 attack, level 1 shield, getting some shuttles as well. All he needs here in the front is a couple of cannons and maybe a couple more probes on the minerals, which he's still producing. So he's got everything in order. Everything is more or less on the way. Also about 
more than 12 gateways this time. Previous game he only had 12, now he's already almost on 14, 16. So his production this game is going to be way better than previously. Stork is adjusting and adapting. He's improvising largely, using his knowledge as a normal map professional, a legend, to try and figure out the puzzle of how do I break the burger Sasu? How do I cook this burger and how do I eat it? Burger Sasu by pure chance is going to find this, didn't intend to but finds it, flies past. Also gets spotted out there by Stork but Stork not responding to it, he might have missed it. Temples are spawning but they're walking away from home. And now there's only two cannons here back at home, and it's the Mulisk arriving on the scene. Gonna take down those cannons, gonna take down that Nexus. Stork might go for the attack here in the front, he's pulling back his Dragoons at the moment. The main is taking some pretty heavy damage, drop there coming into Burgess House's base. Hylas are in between, but the Hylas not responding to it. Burgess House is not responding, not paying attention as Temples on the scene. Temples storming, Temples largely missing the storms, but still gets a couple of drones, gets a huge hit on the drones. But the Nexus here is dead and gone there for Stork. Burgess you managed to do more more drones going down there. He killed pretty much all the drones over there. Pretty much all the drones are dead and gone. Zealots are in the base. Reavers are pushing forward there here in the front. But both players have lost most of their probes. Maybe Stork stormed his own probes? Maybe they got all killed by the Mutalisks. I'm not sure what happened there because I had to jump back and forth. And I've got to jump to this position here because the, this is pushing forward. Reavers are killing very quick. They're also taking some damage there from the Sunkers, but there's only four Sunkers left alive. Zealots are coming forward. Zealots are coming forward. Got units there in the air, returning as well to defend. Reavers, they're still in the mix. Hydas are splitting up. Zealots are on the attack. Mutalists are now on the Reavers. The Reavers are storming on the Mutalists, but the Reavers are now nothing there to defend the Reavers. The Goons are coming in a little bit late. Reavers are going down. Zealots are dying as well. Stork supply is dropping very quick. Burger Sass has got more supply at this point. And he's got a whole lot more units and a slight little bit more money in the bank. Stork now retreating though back to the middle. Burger Sasu decides against chasing him down. No, he chases him down back into the middle. We got a fight on the middle. Burger Sasu is breaking free. But a drop there comes in over the bottom side. Templar unlaws. Templar's gonna storm. No energy for the storm. No energy for the storm if that had stormed. If that drop had killed any drones, Stork would have been able to easily survive the next part of this game because there would be no reinforcements coming in. Well, there still are no reinforcements coming in. This is just a frontal attack there from Burger Sasu. He's retreating back home because we see a lot of Templars are in the mix and those Templars can kill most of these Hydalisks if the storms are placed well. And this is one thing that Stork can do very well. It's placing his storms right on the target. So Stork extends the game, Purgasasa retreats back home, has no robots anymore on the map, so drops are no longer a concern. But this frontal push here from Stork might still be a slight concern there for Purgasasa, who is trying to recover his drone count. Dodges that one storm. He's got a lot more of them there though, starts morphing an Archon as well. Lurkers are in the mix, I don't see observers there for Stork, so this is the real problem for Stork at the moment. Storms on the Lurkers, but he's got six in total, flanking from the top, flanking from the bottom, dodging the storms, Mike going back and forth. Zealots are coming in to push those Hylas back to the Lurkers there though, but the Lurkers are pushing those Dragoon Zealots right back closer to the choke point. Queen's head's gonna go down, but we don't have a Hive. No Hive. 32 drones, 24 probes. This is getting... This is getting like really small scale fights. Stork is doing a really good job of keeping up the pressure despite having almost no economy. He's using his units very wisely, but Burger Sasu having just more money, more units in total, is not having trouble pushing Stork back into the middle. Stork, if Stork only had his Dragoons to protect his Reavers against the Mulalisks, he would have won the game, but his Dragoons were back at home where they were previously fighting against the Mulalisks. Stork had to make some tough choices, and sadly, was just a little bit behind on what Burger Sasu was up to. Just a little bit behind on him. Now on 26 probes, he's got one Nexus. Rebuilding those probes on one Nexus, not a very quick process. And he doesn't have a lot of gas either. We've got Burger Sasu on double the amount of drones, 53. 
building a couple of sunkens. He's not quite sure how rich Stork is, but he's preparing himself for the defense more than adequately. He's over-preparing for the defense. He's making sure that nothing can go wrong from this point anymore. Lurkers in the front, a lot of storms dodging back and forth by the Hydras. Really good control there on display from both players, to be honest. Both players have really good control here. But Burger Sasu with this many hatcheries, 10 on the top, 3 in the bottom, 13 total, should have no trouble surviving. And I think Stork is starting to realize that this might be a little bit too difficult to overcome. Which means that we're probably going to see a double win by Burger Sasu. Zerk against Protoss, two in a row, which means a score of two to zero. And yeah, I'm expecting Stork to just leave the game at any point now. His supply is far behind, his economy is way smaller, and there's just a huge arc of lurkers around this choke point that he's never ever gonna break free. Call CG, and that's game number two. Going to Burger Sasu yet again. He is getting a pretty good portion of revenge dished out towards Stork. So makes it 2-0, and I do hope you return for game number three, which should be coming out tomorrow, hopefully. Hopefully tomorrow. And we're gonna see who wins game number three. So far, we are two games into the best of set, and I'm kinda hyped to see what Stork has to offer to Burger Sasu, because Stork's gonna have to make a comeback here. Stork is gonna have to make a pretty damn strong comeback here but considering we've seen him beat Burger Sasu before, hit a Protoss against Terran, I'm kinda hyped, and I've got some pretty high expectations from this one. See you soon, and have a good day, my mate.